Praise the Lord, church. Uh, praise the Lord, uh, congregation of the Hollister Church and friends and family. We'd uh, once again like to appreciate the Lord for this opportunity uh, to be able to bring forth God's word. Uh, you know, today we want to, we're excited to talk about um, the requirements of God and his blessings. It's always a pleasure to talk about the blessings of God. Amen. Today, you know, we like to cover some scriptures as we go through uh, this lesson. And uh, we just want to appreciate the Lord today for once again for this opportunity. And we hope uh, that, uh, you know, you're blessed and we hope uh, through the Holy Spirit, uh, God's word will minister to your heart. Amen. That is our desire today, is that the church of the Lord be edified. And as we get started this day or this moment, we want to uh, read a scripture for, uh, I would like to be teach out of Job chapter 11. And for today, I would like to uh, use a couple of verses which are found in uh, uh, chapter 11, verses 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. But for right now, I would like to read uh, this scripture, and it, it starts off with uh, verse 13. It says, If thou prepare thine heart, and stretch out thy hands towards him. See, today, uh, as we make reference to the other verses, but right now, uh, as today, as we consider the blessings of God, see, um, the Lord knows how to bless his people. Even in this time that we live in, even in this moment, in this world, and this environment that we find ourselves, uh, even in this time, the Lord has no problem keeping his promise, which is in the word of God. Amen. We uh, are glad that the Lord can minister to us through his Holy Spirit on a daily basis. You know, uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord is with us. Uh, you know, I, I want to remind those of you that have received the gift of the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues, and that is God dwelling in us. That is the promise of God. That is one of the promises that we have received. Uh, it is a great promise to be the tabernacle, to be the sanctuary of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, no longer does uh, he dwell in a temple built by hand, but he dwells in our hearts. That was the promise that we received by Jesus Christ. And that was the promise that we received in the book of Acts as we read the scriptures there. But today um, uh, we are social distancing. Today we are wearing masks. You know, today we are finally finding it difficult, amen, to move around and get around, uh, not like before. Um, but all in all, amen, that does not restrict the Holy Spirit. That does not hinder, uh, hinder the Holy Spirit, I'll even say. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in our lives. And the reason I'm talking about the Holy Spirit is because the, the, the lesson is requirements of God and his blessings. What greater blessing is there than to have the Spirit of God with you 24-7. Amen. You know, that phrase is thrown around 24-7. You know, when they're bragging or boasting, you know, uh, when they're pumping themselves up, I can do this 24-7 or whatever. But today, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Lord's Holy, the Lord Jesus Christ, is with us 
24-7. Amen. You know, they might restrict us in, uh, uh, you have to cut your hair outside. You can't go inside the buildings. You have to eat outside. You know, there's so many laws now and so many restrictions. Um, I'm just bringing up a point, which is you could put all the restrictions, all the difficulties, and all these are, yes, for our safety, but the Holy Spirit is not held back. The Holy Spirit is alive in us. Uh, you know, uh, 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 no, no gatherings more than, um, you know, 25 or whatever number activities, you know, People are complaining that they can't go to a concert. Uh, they can't uh, uh, have a party, I hear on the news. And those are the kind of blessings they're talking about. They're saying that the government is keeping them away from their blessings, which in reality is sin. You know, that's what they want to do, sin. But uh, we're not here to talk about so much about that. But I'm just saying that, you know, uh, all that is true. But the Holy Spirit, um, once again, is a blessing. They cannot take, uh, nothing on this earth can take, shouldn't take away the blessing that we have. And we want to talk of, about a few of these blessings. You know, uh, for, for, for instance, uh, this scripture uh, that we have for us today is, I want to start on the blessings. Uh, the scripture in, in Job uh, brings up uh, some points here. And uh, it's, it's, it's telling us, you know, uh, first of all, uh, well, let, let's start with the blessings. Amen. It says uh, that um, one, of the, uh, one of the blessings here, I want to start with the first blessing for, for, me, for me today in in the scriptures here is, uh, is it says that uh, in verse 15, it says that uh, uh, lift up thy face without spot. Amen. And thou shalt be steadfast and thou shalt not fear. Amen. Uh, as, as we consider the scripture, you know, where we thank God that one of the blessings is that we can uh, uh, be without spot, that um, the Lord can make us holy. And holiness is a blessing. You know, no matter how much religion a man has, or no matter how much religion a man studies, or no matter how much religion a man goes through, which is fine, man could be more religious, and that's fine, but only God can make us holy. God has uh, washed us with his blood. And uh, first it was the Holy Ghost is a blessing. Now I want to come to the blessing of being washed by the blood of Jesus. Only, on, the only where, only where, only place you could be washed is by the blood of Jesus. And uh, that is a blessing. That is holiness. Today, we're not talking about religion. We're talking about being uh, uh, blessed by the Lord, uh, being uh, sanctified, being blessed, being made holy, that we could stand before God without fear. Amen. That we could stand before God. Amen. A righteous God, a holy God. And we could stand before God. We could... Uh, look up towards him without shame. And why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And, you know, we, we want to thank God that, that, that the blood is there available to us. Blessing. Another blessing is that we shall be steadfast. Amen. If, if there's one thing that we need in this walk is to be steadfast, to be uh, rooted to be grounded. Amen. Uh, I like to be in a church where um, 
uh, the where I can my 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 faith has deep roots. Praise the Lord, Amen. And if I wrote my faith has these roots that go down deep, Amen. And these roots can weather the storm. Praise the Lord, Amen. These roots are able to bring up the nutrition that we need and, and stabilize us. See, that's what we're talking about, is being stable, uh, that we don't uh, just be blown around by every wind of doctrine, that the Lord will make us stable. I'm not here to talk about church hopping. You can imagine. I'm talking about being rooted in uh, the things of God, being stable. I overheard a discussion the other day uh, Two people were talking, oh, uh, you know, this guy, uh, 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 this man was a Trinitarian, and then he became uh, one God, and then he went back to being a Trinitarian. See, I'm talking about being stable in the house of the Lord. And thank God for that. And I already brought up uh, not having fear, but, um, uh, and today, there's a lot of fear in this world. Today, there's a lot of uncertainty in this world. You know, what, what is tomorrow going to bring us? But today, uh, the worst fear is to be afraid of God. And we could be blessed to be in a relationship where it's a beautiful relationship. It's a loving relationship. And know that you know that you know you are in God's uh hands, that you are in God's uh, plans. Praise the Lord. If there's something that I want to be is in the plans of the Lord. Plans change. Environments change. Uh, uh, surroundings change. Amen. Uh, if, if, you know, this is probably not where I thought I would be 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Uh, my life has taken many turns. Man, I didn't plan on all these. And some of them I planned against them, and they still came through against, even though I said no, and it's still happening. What I'm trying to say is, it's great uh, blessing to know that you are in the plan of God, that you are in the, the, the kingdom of God, that you are in the realm of God, that you are in the, the workplace of God. Amen. That you are in the will of God. As we pray, Lord, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we, that we are in the will of God. We might not understand it. Uh, perhaps we might not even see it. But to know that you are in the will of God. That's, that takes away the fear uh, that we're talking about here today. And as we continue on the blessings of God, and, and it says in verse 16, it says, uh, let me read it here in this verse 16. In the, and we have it in the King James Bible, but if you allow me, I'll read it in the uh, New Living Translation. And it says, your life will be brighter than the noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as the morning. See, that is a blessing, praise the Lord. Talking about, uh, uh, you know, being blessed. I'm sorry, that was verse 17. Amen. Verse 16, it says, You will forget your misery, and it will be like water that flowed away. I wanted to read that scripture. I wanted to make sure I made a point of that. Because it says here, you will forget your misery. Praise the Lord. Now, we're, we're talking about the blessings of God. Now, that has to be a blessing. It says, you know, in King James, it says, but thou shalt forget thy misery. And, and that's, that's good. You know, that, I like it. But here easily for me you will forget your misery. Amen. Now, you know, misery is, is uh, plagues mankind. 
there are misery, there's misery that uh, you brought upon yourself by choices we make. Uh, man, it's misery that you bring upon yourself. You chose that misery. Like they say, pick your poison. You know, you chose it. As growing up as a young person, the adults in our lives told us, you're going down the wrong road. And it's miserable. It's a, it's a, it's a miserable road. And sometimes we're plagued with misery uh, because of what we deserve. We deserve it. But some miseries come out of nowhere, they seem. And we did everything, but they came anyways. But today, this verse ministers to me and my heart. Because sometimes uh, misery keeps you up at night. Sometimes even in your dreams, your miseries come to you. They wake you. They, they're with you. But the, I have a promise. I have a blessing from God. Amen. Once again, hallelujah. He says, you will forget your misery. I, we can't read it any more simple than that. Amen. It will be like water that flowed away. Now, I need that blessing. I personally here tell you today, I need that blessing. I want that blessing. I uh, uh, have to have faith today because uh, sometimes misery is, 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 is just, uh, we can't shake it. And we've learned through, through life or through many of preachings, uh, even sin won't shake misery. Some people are miserable. And that's why they turn to sin. People are miserable. That's why if you turn to different vices, people are miserable. Amen. Uh, and and this, that's not the Bible study today. But if you are like me and misery has come to visit you, there's a promise. There's a blessing. Amen. That it will be like water that flowed away. And I'm counting on that blessing. I'm standing upon the word of God. God is Christians. God has given us his Holy Spirit. And the other thing I want to talk about real quick is Jake that God has also given us his holy word. This is not a book of man. This is God's word that we count on, that we trust, and we believe. But I'm going to stop with the blessings, and I'm going to say I have to at this time bring in, because the lesson was requirements of God. See, uh, if you will, there are conditional promises in the word of God. There are Today we are talking about requirements. The first word I read, excuse me, the first verse I read to you, and let me read it. Uh, we read it in King James. If you let me read it in uh, the New Living Bible, also in the International Version. It says, International Version says, Yet if you devote your heart to him, and stretch out your hands to him, which is God. See, there's a big if. If you, now we're talking about blessings, and we're talking about, I hope you remember the blessings I brought up. I hope you remember them. But now we're talking about requirements. And it says, if you read this text in the King James, there's a few ifs. If, 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 if. There's a few, I'll let you count the ifs. Amen. But today, we bring up the first if. He says, if you devote your heart to God. In King James, it says, if thou preparest thine heart. Now, prepare. Is what we're looking at. Especially in these days where, you know, they, the government tells us, ah, the government tells us we can't be in church more than a half an hour, excuse me, an hour. Boy, more than ever, you better come with your heart prepared to church. As a worship leader, I remember my job is uh, the congregation full house. We had to prepare them 
for the preaching. And sometimes, um, not sometimes, all the time, it's through the anointing of God. But I felt the stress to prepare this people. Boy, you better sing the right song. You better sing a slow song. You better sing a fast song. You needed the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I had to be up here. I needed the inspiration. Lord, what song do I sing? Two songs or a hundred songs? But that is all gone. I'm just bringing up a point here. That is all gone. Worship leaders, uh, 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 I forget what they're called, the, the people that sing, Praise team, now we need more than ever to come to God with a prepared heart. You better prepare yourself. People walk in, pastors fixing their tie, pastors top tying their shoes so they can come up here. Oh Lord, help me Lord. Now we need to come with our shoes tied and our ties on. I'm talking about our hearts being prepared. And for to help us, I said, read a verse that says, uh, uh, to devote your heart. To devote your heart. I'm glad this is not a study on um, heart, because I don't have time. But it says, it's a study on requirements. If anything, God does not want a corner. Oh, I'm going to dust this little corner. A little tiny corner off in your heart. I'm going to dust a little corner. Here you go, Jesus. There's just enough room for you to dust a little corner off. How many of you have ever been in a house and you have not felt welcomed? Mi casa, tu casa. But you're in that house and you do not feel welcomed. How many of you have been at a table and you do not feel welcomed? Amen. That's what we're talking about today is uh, having a heart devoted to God, prepared for to God. And, uh, uh, the American Standard Version says, if you, another if, well, it's the same if, but if you would direct your heart right. Amen. If you would direct, oh, I like watching, oh, never mind. But those of us that used to watch movies, oh, I like movies from this director. See what I'm saying? See, today, we can be a director. We need to devote. We need to prepare. We're talking about requirements. We need to devote. We need to prepare. We need to uh, direct our hearts towards God. Amen. And I will just say, put the Lord on. He wants not the corner of your heart or Sunday mornings of your heart. He wants to be on the throne of our hearts. That's a requirement. Amen. And he says, and then the scripture says, and lift up your hands towards him. Amen. To lift up your hands towards him. To, to lift up, so it seems so simple, but that's a requirement just to, to surrender to God. And church, you know, we would like to encourage you. You know, we'd like to encourage you uh, to make the preparations that are necessary as we continue uh, uh, in some of the read the scriptures in the scriptures it says uh, to 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 banish iniquity that is in our hands. Our hands cannot be lifted up towards God towards God if we have if they're holding on to iniquity. There's a scripture in there, and it goes all far as to say to to remove the sin. From your tabernacle, your tabernacle, this tabernacle. Amen. What's living at your address? Hallelujah. What's living at my address? Amen. How many times do we get mail from somebody that doesn't really live there? Are you hearing me? You know, what's what's living at your address? Amen. It says to banish it, to get rid of it, to kick it out. These are the requirements. I'm not telling you this. I'm hearing it. Just like you from the Lord. Amen. Let's get to work, church. God bless you. Be blessed.
Amen.